Ferrari signed Carlos Sainz Jr. to solve a problem. But if he achieves what he doubtless intends to, he might yet end up causing one at Maranello. The 26-year-old is already well advanced in his preparations for the coming season, getting a day and a half of running in a 2018 car under his belt in late January. He also made himself popular with a Tifosi by making a surprise visit to a dedicated group of seven fans who were watching his first test at Fiorano from just outside the circuit, proving that he intends to be a hit on and off track for Ferrari. It's been a positive start to the Science ferrari alliance, but it won't be until the season starts that the team will discover if he really is the strong support driver that it thinks it's signed. After all, Ferrari doesn't want him to be too big a hit. Make no mistake, Science will be determined to be more than just a wingman for Charles Leclerc. Science's status at Ferrari Science is too professional to be an actively disruptive presence, and he's a superb signing. But like all ambitious drivers moving teams, he will head into Ferrari with the objective of establishing himself as the main man. But he was chosen to be the support actor Leclerc at a time when the sometimes problematic 2019 on-track battle between Ferrari's drivers was still fresh in the memory. Naturally, Ferrari's official line is that there's no formalised hierarchy. That's very likely true when it comes to the contract terms, but the dynamic of a number one and number two driver is more complicated than many assume. Occasionally, it is a codified, explicit relationship, but usually it just follows from performance. Valtteri Bottas is Lewis Hamilton's de facto number two at Mercedes, not because he's designated to be so, but because he's the lesser, but still hugely able, driver. And he's good at it because he sees himself as the potential leader and doesn't stop pushing, in the process keeping Hamilton sharp. Teams conduct a huge amount of analysis of drivers before signing them, and it's impossible to escape the conclusion that Ferrari sees Sainz as a driver in this vein. A very strong, consistent, smooth operator, but one who will become the effective support act. But there's no need to make that formal, because it's expected that performance will lock in this dynamic. Team principal Mattia Bonotto has made it emphatically clear that there's nothing in either driver's contract codifying any number one or number two status. But it's only in the most extreme cases that there is anything formal. There's plenty of space in everything Bonotto has said for unstated assumptions. After all, Leclerc is on a lucrative contract that keeps him at Ferrari to the end of 2024, while Sainz is the newcomer on a two-year deal. There is an implied hierarchy there. It can be dangerous to assume a natural order when you put together a new driver pairing. Perhaps the most famous example of this was when Williams signed Nelson Piquet for 1986. The version of events differ, but Piquet was apparently given assurances he was the leader without Nigel Mansell or other members of the team knowing about it. Team co-owner Patrick Head, for example, knew nothing about any such assurances that may have been given by Frank Williams. And why? Presumably because the assumption was that Piquet, then a two-times world champion, would comfortably outperform Mansell, who had yet to win a Grand Prix when the deal was done. And we all know how that turned out, with the pair taking points off each other and handing Alain Prost the World Championship. This also means things can change at Ferrari, and Sainz will back himself to turn the tables. It's only natural for any driver, and looking at Sainz's first steps in F1 at Toro Rosso, the battle for supremacy with Max Verstappen proved fractious. But since then, he's built more experience and knows how to battle to establish himself without the risk of such complications. How the Sainz versus Leclerc battle could play out. Living with Leclerc won't be easy, and much could depend on how good the car is. It's not that Sainz can only do well in a strong car, but he has struggled at times with rear end instability. Leclerc's great skill is, like the vanishingly few gold standard drivers, he can extract pace from any kind of car balance. Over the past couple of years, he has consistently delivered outstanding live-wire qualifying laps that often Sebastian Vettel could not match, and he's backed them up with strong race performances despite making a few too many mistakes. 
it's likely that Sainz would have struggled in qualifying up against Leclerc in last year's Ferrari SF1000 given its weak rear end, but the SF21 should improve on that despite the fact it's an evolution rather than a brand new car. If Ferrari produces a better and more consistent car, then Sainz will be a bigger threat. Returning to what Bonotto has said about Sainz, it's clear how he perceives him if you read between the lines. He didn't talk of him as a potential future champion, as you might expect for a team signing a 26-year-old who has been a midfield standout over the past two seasons, but instead he stressed his all-round contribution to the team. Yes, any team might underline the importance of the team's objectives, but the focus on the Constructors' Championship for Sainz is very clear. Leclerc is the star, Sainz the support act, unless he can prove otherwise. Given Ferrari has bet the farm on Leclerc, it stands to reason that one of the primary motivators in selecting its new driver for 2021 was one who would fit in well with him. This is not to criticise Sainz, who has been consistently underrated throughout his career and always finds a new gear to move into. While 2019 and 20 seemed pretty similar, Bonotto has pointed out that Sainz raised his qualifying game to meet the rising challenge of the improving Lando Norris, and he's right to do so. That's arguably Sainz's greatest strength, his intelligence and the capacity to improve himself constantly. There's no doubt that he's his father's son, bringing every bit of the class, brainpower and dedication that took Carlos Sr. to so much success in rallying. Bonotto unquestionably values what Sainz can bring to the team, and it has talked up the qualities he offers in terms of experience, pace and ideas. But while Bonotto does refer to Sainz as a leader, that appears to be more in the collaborative sense than in terms of being a number one, and what should be emphasised here is the reference to him as a great teammate to Leclerc. That's what Ferrari's hoping for, and that's what Sainz will be. The question here is if he might prove to be a little bit too much for Ferrari and Leclerc. Leclerc has already seen off a four times world champion in Vettel, but now he's the king of the hill at Ferrari, he faces a very different challenge with Sainz as the would-be usurper. Leclerc's brilliance will certainly be tested, even if the Monegasque is the favourite to prevail. And now that Leclerc has established himself as the main man at Ferrari, in arguably the most high-pressure seat in F1, this will be an extra test of his credentials. Ferrari and Bonotto will be hoping Sainz falls into the category of loyal subject rather than revolutionary. But Sainz is not to be underestimated. How do you think Sainz will do at Ferrari up against Leclerc? Let us know in the comments below, and if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up. And to make sure you don't miss anything from the race, hit subscribe and the notifications bell.